I vomit up video games. No, like literally, I vomited up video games into a bucket that was in front of me while I was in the Amazonian rainforest in 2018, high as a kite on ayahuasca. I've been hesitant about doing this video because honestly, video games as an addiction for somebody who, like me, who's an investigative journalist, I mean, it feels kind of lame. And yet so much of the population uh, in America and the world at large um, can get pulled in to the amazing graphics, gameplay, dopamine, addictive properties of video games so that it can suck up all of our time like we are accomplishing such amazing things, um, even though we're not, we're just getting good at a video game, um, that, um, that it is actually something of an epidemic. Now this, Video is not a um, indictment against video games in general. There are totally many, many people who can play them totally fine. Uh, but it is the story about how in my personal life, how um, I've had a negative sort of um, too much uh, relationship with video games, how they have sucked up a lot of my time and how honestly, it totally went away when I went into the Peruvian Amazon and I was not expecting it. Okay, so now big picture, 2018, I had just put out my book, What Doesn't Kill Us, and I was, I mean, honestly, a little famous and pretty successful and had more money in my life than I ever had before. Um, and it was awesome. And I was gonna work on a new book and uh, I also had a lot of time on my hands um, because the way that the author life works is that um, you know, you write a book, you have royalties, and you sort of contemplate your next book. And there's these lull times in between when you're you're researching, you're writing proposals. So it's a lot of like hurry up and wait uh, in my line of work. During that waiting time, Super easy for me to turn on a game. And the game that I played the most was something called Dota 2, uh, which is, you know, works well on a Macintosh platform and uh, is super intense. And you play a little character that, you know, fights other people's characters. And it's like a team game. And it is very difficult, but very, very immersive. And I spent, I mean, I don't know, if I look on my Steam profile, it's probably something like 2,000 hours playing this game over, you know, the course of the time that I had it. Um, it was mm, not optimal. So in 2018, I was, in, well, in addition to playing far too much video games, I was also researching my book, The Wedge, where, you know, in What Doesn't Kill Us, I had used ice baths um, and I, obstacle course races and, you know, found the way that my body works in sort of very, very intense external environments and how I can change um, my internal reactions to that totally great for anxiety and stress and it was great and I wanted to push the bar forward to figure out what I could do next. Like what is there to these techniques that is more than just breath work and ice baths? What other stimuli could I get into? And the book goes over like 10 of them. So I'm dealing with fear, I'm de dealing with heat, uh, dealing with no stimulation at all in, in flotation tanks and, and a lot of different things. And I was working up to sort of a big end of the book um, expedition, a, a thing that, that was sort of a really big, and psychedelics have been in the news for a long time. And I have like a minor history doing psychedelics in my past. And ayahuasca, which is a uh, potion of the vine of ayahuasca and the leaf called the chakaruna leaf. You mix them together, you boil them up and you get ayahuasca. And it gives you these very, very intense psychedelic experiences. Now, the idea in the wedge is you go into an external stimuli, something very strong, like a big sauna, like an eight hour sauna. And then you change the way you emotionally relate to that external stimuli. And then you start feeling better. You start to be able to manage your, yourself in external stress. So there's also this concept of the internal wedge where you take a substance or eat a food or you change the way your body feels inside. And that you also changes your perception and reactions to emotional stimuli in your body. Well. A psychedelic is like the most powerful internal wedge out there, probably. You take this substance, you hallucinate, uh, and in that, 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 that time where reality warps, and they war it warps in a lot of different ways, you have this opportunity for intense personal growth. 
Ayahuasca is maybe the most intense um, substance out there. Maybe you've seen uh, videos about uh, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which, uh, you know, people like lick toads and smoke toad venom and they get shot out into space and they talk to God and they see these elves made of machine parts and they communicate with ultimate consciousness of the universe. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff out there about ayahuasca. I was very curious. I was reading about ayahuasca and I finally decided to find a shaman and travel to South America. Uh, I went there with my photographer, Jake Holshue, who is this awesome photographer. Uh, and, and, you know, I paid him in an ayahuasca experience, which is a very unusual way to work with a photographer, but he's a very nice guy. Uh, and I went there and we're, we go fly into this place called Iquitos, which is a, a, a town with a runway in the middle of the Peruvian Amazon. And I had met this woman named Luzma, um, who is a shaman there, who worked with this other shaman named Tony. And, and my intention was to get shot out into space and talk with God, to, to, to connect with the universal consciousness of the world and, and really just sort of understand in a really big way everything out there. That was my intention with going down to Peru. And that's not exactly what happened. The first thing that you do when you're going to prepare for a psychedelic journey is that you um, lower all of your internal stimuli uh, so that you go in very pure. So ayahuasca is going to be a very intense internal stimuli. So you have a very bland diet. Like you eat just potatoes and like chicken with no sauce. And and you try to, to like live in areas that have less stimuli, you know, no electronics. Like you really try to, to, to lower all of the external stimuli so that when you get into a sacred ritual circumstance, when you're on a hallucinogen, um, that experience seems like a high higher peak. So I get to the, the jungle, which is intense, right? And there happens to be no phones, which is great because I'm, I, like most people, am somewhat addicted to uh, electronic communication. Uh, and in this place, there was none of that. There's some other people on at, at this, at this um, center. And Tony, who is the shaman who is running um, this entire uh, location, is treating many people for very intense illnesses. You know, we're talking about cancer, advanced stages of lupus. One guy has um, a kidney failure. And most of the people are in very bad shape, sort of on death's door. And then there's me, this journalist who wants to get shot out into space and talk to God. Okay, so this is the intention. So the, day, the first day I get there, I arrive at about 3 p.m. And that night is a first ayahuasca ceremony. He doesn't run many of these and they're sort of like on a schedule. So, so I didn't want to do it the first day I get there, but that's the way it works. So it's like, cool. I meet Luzma. She's a wonderful person. We have some intense conversations. And uh, at midnight, when it's completely dark, I'm living in this little tiny thatched hut. I have to walk down this jungle path to get to the ceremony location. And um, and it is a, another hut that's pitch black. I mean, imagine there's jaguars probably in every like corner of this forest that's all around me. There's vines. It's very, very remote. And I get there and I sit down and I'm like, okay, well, my intention is to talk to God. And Tony is... Um, is playing a drum and singing a, a shamanic song. And he, he prepares this ritual brew. Um, and it looks like a motor oil, like, a, like sticky, nasty motor oil. And one at a time, you take it, you take it, you take it. And you sit down, they kneel in front of them, they, they take it and they go back down and they look, they look sort of like grossed out. And uh, I think I'm like the eighth or ninth or 10th person in line. And I sit there, I get up and I'm, I've set my intention. I'm like, I am gonna talk to God. And you know, he asked me some questions, and I smile, and 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 then I, then I, it's like this little plastic, very thin cup, and he pours this thick, viscous liquid into it, and I shoot it back, and oh my God, it's like the worst. I'm like, I almost like puke uh, as like, I can like remember the the taste in my mouth right now. I, I almost puke, and I don't. I hold it in, and then I go and sit down, and and I just wait. Because at first, like, it takes a long time to hit in. So he's, like, playing his drum, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I'm seeing some, like, light visuals. And then here's the strange thing. Ayahuasca is not a totally, like, visual, like, pattern um, uh, uh, psychedelic. I mean, it can be, but it's not all, like, like everyone says who they take takes ayahuasca is every trip is completely different. If you talk to a shaman, 
the the ayahuasca is itself something like a divine essence it is an essence of nature and there is the spirit of ayahuasca that comes in this potion and it will talk to you and for me my first experience when i started feeling these sensations it was ayahuasca talking to me and my intention was set to go talk to god and what ayahuasca told me was that scott you are lame you spend so much time playing video games that you're not living up to your true potential. And it, and it took me through the games. It was like I, play, I was like watching myself play the games and watching all of this time and effort and like developing skills to be a better video game player, which were not actually serving me. And I'm like, Ayahuasca, I wanted to talk to God. And Ayahuasca was like, no, we're gonna look at this. And not only that, I'm gonna show you why you are so lame. And so it showed me why I was so addicted to them because I, because video games, which are designed by neuroscientists, are, are give you little dopamine hits for every little thing you do. Every time I kill a player on the opposing team or get that cool magic item or whatever, um, those little power-ups, those hit trigger my the reward center in my brain and make me say, oh, this is great, and then want, want to do it more and more again. And where real life can be actually sort of difficult, like writing a book is actually hard. Finding a new contract is actually really difficult. It's so much easier to have those quick dopamine hits in a video game. And Ayahuasca showed me exactly why I get sucked in. And I'm sitting there being like, well, why can't I just talk to the universe? And Ayahuasca says, no, you have to listen to this. And you know, for eight hours, for eight hours, Ayahuasca is telling me what about video games sir is serving me and why I should look to find other things to serve me. Andrew Huberman once told me that uh, the definition of addiction is the progressive narrowing of the things that give you pleasure. And this really was hitting me because I could spend so much on video games that I would get those quick dopamine hits that the things that gave me pleasure were less. And you can get addicted to anything. And if you think about that definition, the progressive narrowing of the things that give you pleasure, um, it makes sense that, that this was becoming too big a part of my life. So the first night of ayahuasca, it was, that was it. The next morning I get up and I'm like, huh, that was intense. Why didn't I get shot into space? And uh, over the course of the week, we were going to do this three times. And I'm sort of like kicking around for the next day. Again, there's no internet. There's nothing. I'm just sort of sitting, journaling, maybe reading some books, talking to some people. And, and I'm like, well, okay, well, next time I'm going to get shot into space because ayahuasca has lectured me on what is going on. Okay, so the day passes and I'm like, okay, here we go. And we're in the, I guess it's the third night at the, at the, the center. And, and, and I go, it's midnight, jaguars everywhere, jungle everywhere. Uh, and, and I get into this same circle. Tony is singing his shamanic song. Luzma's there. Um, people are, are, you know, in various stages of illness. And I, I take this viscous liquid and, uh, and I'm ready again to go speak to God. So I sit down and, uh, and I wait and I wait and I wait and Tony sings his song and I'm still waiting and nothing is happening whatsoever. All I am doing is sitting there in the darkness being like, what's, I don't feel sick. I don't feel bad. I don't, nothing. I'm just sort of sitting there being like, huh, what's going on? And it's, it's literally hours of that. And then I feel in my stomach this, Oh, the gurgle, the, the horrible gurgle of ayahuasca. And it comes up and I'm like, oh my God, because ayahuasca, one of the things it does is it makes you poop and vomit. And it's not a very fun ride. And I feel, and someone gives me over the vomit bucket with other people have vomited and it comes over to me because God's about to puke. And I'm like, oh God, and it's pitch black. And, and, I'm, and I puke up video games like right there splashing into the bottom of the bucket is all of that internal stuff that i've had the physical manifestation of video games and it splooshes right into the bottom of the bucket and i get up and i'm like oh, that's weird that's weird what what it's not like mario or something but somehow the 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 physical manifestation of video games has collected in my stomach and has been vomited up into the bucket and here is the absolute crazy crazy thing is that after I got back from the Amazon, 
I didn't want to play video games anymore. That urge, all of the urges around video game addiction had been processed the first night and expelled in a big, splashy, vomity pukeness on the next night. And, um, and for a year, I didn't even bother turning on the games ever. And now, um, I have played video games since then. You know, during the pandemic, there were stuff. And I can take them or leave them. Like, they're fine. They're fine. They're like, whatever. But like, that, that manifestation was gone. And, and, and that is how ayahuasca cured me of my video game addiction. Now, I will say that on the very next time I did it, we, we spent the week the next two days brewing another version of ayahuasca we're cutting down the vines of ayahuasca and and collecting chakruna leaves mixing them together and i did on the final night get shot out into space i did meet god i did speak to all of my ancestors uh i was my grandmother at one point uh and it was a really really interesting experience and i write about all of that in the wedge but Honestly, the takeaway, the really more important thing is that I understand now how psychedelics can physically take a symbol or an idea in our brain and concretify it into something that you can literally excrete out of your body like vomit. And, uh, and it works. I understand it. I understand how this can work for alcohol addiction. I understand how this can work for um, drug addiction, sex addiction, um, bad relationships. Like I, I now understand that fundamental process uh, from a personal level. Now, I have not done ayahuasca since then. I actually haven't done really much of any hallucinogens since then. But these therapies are real and they can work and it's how you use them with intention. Now, if you wanna know more, check out my book, The Wedge. It's a really good intro and I build up on how you can use sensation, link it with emotion and change a lot of things in your life. You don't need to get all the way into ayahuasca, but you can actually find similar experiences by by pushing yourself in in increasingly extreme and weird environments. And uh, and it transformed my life and has generalized a principle of environmental exposure uh, in in general, where I have become a more resilient, more emotionally stable, and non-video game playing person um, because of this journey. So. That is my story on how ayahuasca cured my video game addiction. Please like and subscribe. And I have a newsletter that I would love you to check out where I occasionally post some tips and tricks and things that, that I find relatively interesting. And you'll get updates about other books I'm doing, such as my napping book, which uh, where I, now that I've, I've spent two books writing about how you can use intense experiences to change your life, now I want to look at how the down state is also incredibly beneficial and useful. Thank you so much for spending like 19 minutes listening to me ramble about puking in the jungle. I very, very much appreciate it. Till next time.